Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss about VPC endpoint. So what is that? Let me discuss with one diagram. Okay. So here as you can see, this particular diagram is about AWS networking different concepts, whatever we have covered till now. If you want to know the detailed explanation of individual components, then you can go through the link given in the description box. Okay. So this overall setup is about AWS cloud where we have launched a VPC instance and as you know that a VPC instance can span across a region that's why this particular outer box is there and here region is hidden so you can consider this is our VPC okay in this region we have launched our VPC okay now VPC is having a IP range that IP range we can split across multiple subnets right so here we have created one public subnet and with that public subnet we associated a route table and we are having a private subnet with that as well we have associated another route table okay and in this public subnet we have launched one EC2 instance and in this private subnet also we have launched another EC2 instance okay now this particular route table is connected with internet gateway using which we can connect to internet easily okay so suppose here from this particular EC2 instance if you do ping google.com here it will work right because here this particular internet gateway is connected with this route table okay now from this private subnet it is not possible to ping google.com directly because here in this particular route table by default internet gateway we have not added right but then how we can enter in this private subnet the answer is very simple this whole setup is present inside one vpc only so if you consider this EC2 and this EC2 instance, they are basically under same VPC. So local connection is accessible via route table, right? That's how what we do using internet SSH. We enter in this particular EC2 and from this particular EC2 to this particular EC2, we do another SSH. That's all we do to enter in this private subnet, right? Now suppose this particular public subnet you are using to host your web service which is public facing and in this private subnet EC2 you have kept your database server because database store confidential data that's why you want to make that secure and that's why you launch that particular database server in an EC2 instance which is coming under private subnet okay. But sometime suppose from this particular EC2 instance you need to connect with internet maybe to download certain packages or to access some external web server via internet to get some information sometimes requirement might come like this way so for that what we can do we can set up a NAT gateway in this public subnet right and if we can configure this private uh, subnet route table to connect with NAT gateway if some request to internet coming from this private subnet right now NAT gateway basically use elastic IP which is not free Okay, so that obviously take charges. So is there any alternate solution that instead of using NAT gateway, we can use certain AWS services which are outside our VPC. Okay, that's what let us try to understand. Okay? And that's where VPC endpoint comes in picture. Okay? So suppose you are having some other AWS services like DynamoDB or S3, something like that. And those services which are basically accessible via internet directly, what you can do if you want to access S3 DynamoDB instead of using internet if you want to access them via this private subnet EC2 you can use VPC endpoint which is there in your private subnet okay actually if you consider S3 DynamoDB these are which is basically accessible via public internet right but VPC endpoint this is a service which will basically allow you to connect to these S AWS services like S3 DynamoDB etc using a private network instead of using public internet okay and that way because this access is private it is basically more secure and it will not take charge like NAT gateway okay and this is reliable as well as it can scale horizontally to maintain the traffic performance okay so these are all the advantages so what will happen if we use vpc endpoint then we no need to configure NAT gateway to access s3 or dynamodb this kind of services or neither we need basically direct internet connection we can basically use this private internet setup okay using this vpc endpoint to access s3 dynamodb etc from the private subnet okay that's all the VPC endpoint definition is. A VPC endpoint enables connection between a virtual private cloud which is VPC and supported services like S3, DynamoDB which are actually accessible via HTTP internet connection 
those you can access using private network okay that is without requiring that you use internet gateway or net service you can use this vpc endpoint to connect virtual private cloud and different supported services only one condition is there this service whatever you want to access like s3 dynamodb etc they should be present in the same region where your vpc is if your vpc is basically in ohio region you have to create your s3 dynamodb etc also in ohio region okay so now let's see this particular setup how we can access s3 via vpc endpoint okay that's what we are going to see and in our upcoming videos we will see application in dynamodb as well okay so here what i will do i will go to vpc and then here let me show you the earlier setup already we configured something and we, will, we are going to use that same thing only here virtual private cloud we created if we go to that here you can see this is basically cidr and for this particular vpc we have created two subnets right one is basically public subnet one is private subnet as you can see private private subnet b and public subnet a they are having their own cidr okay and we have created also public route table as well as private route table private route table is basically we have associated with the private subnet public route table we have associated with the public subnet okay and coming to internet gateway we are having one internet gateway which we are using to connect to internet for the public subnet ec2 whatever we are going to launch that's all setup we have currently okay now what we will do we will open aws management console in a new tab and we will create an iam okay so that ec2 can access s3 okay because ultimately our goal is this particular ec2 should have access to this s3 and for that at least what we need we need to give the permission to this ec2 right later we can configure all the networking stuff but from the access point of view we need to give access to this particular ec2 so that they can access the s3 using the role okay so what i will do i will basically go to iam and then here i will create the role okay create role i want to create the role for ec2 i will go to next okay and here i will choose s3 so here s3 full access let us give i will go to next and role name i can give demo yt vpc in point okay so copy this one i'll create the role okay so this particular role we are going to assign to all our ec2 instances okay so that they can access directly our s3 okay so what i will do i will go back to aws management console and here first i will go to ec2 and i will launch two ec2 one in public subnet one in private subnet with the iam role whatever you created okay so as you can see currently no ec2 instance is running we will launch an instance okay so first what we are going to do we are going to launch this particular ec2 instance which is in public subnet we don't need nat gateway for this demo i'll select this one and keep default configuration here what i will do i will choose our okay this is actually not virginia but we created the setup in our ohio region vpc so let me switch to ohio region and show you the demo okay launch instance i'll select this one next i will choose our virtual private cloud whatever i created and public access i'll be giving public subnet and then here i will assign public ip okay because that is required to connect with internet and i am role for this demo i will be whatever i am role i created demo yt vpc endpoint that one we are choosing okay i will go to next 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 security group let us keep as it is for security purpose if you want more secure system then you can choose only my ip so that way only your ip will be able to connect and then here we can launch the instance okay so i will choose this particular rsa key file and i will launch the instance okay so this particular ec2 we have launched in this public sub then we will go back to this particular console and i will launch another instance for our private subnet ec2 okay so i will go to next configuration i will choose our vpc and this time i will choose private subnet 
and auto assign public ip public ip is not required for private subnet ec2 that's why we are not giving im role we are giving basically this one whatever you created okay then next 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 here ssh and i will also configure icmp so that we can ping okay so for ping purpose what we will do we will go to subnets from public subnet ec2 we will ping private subnet ec2 right so i will just take the public subnet IPv4 CIDR okay replace that in both place I'll go to next I will click on launch okay so here our private subnet is to also launched perfectly okay so I can use this particular one as a first step what I will do I will transfer the PEM file to this particular public subnet EC2 so that we can use that particular PEM file to connect with this private subnet EC2 using SSH. Okay, so I will go to new site, I will paste this particular one, and then here I will write EC2 user. Okay, and in advanced, I will be going to authentication and I will choose the PPK file. Okay. I will click on yes. And then here our public subnet is created. I will just transfer the PIM file. Okay. Whatever we created in the key pair. Okay, cool. That is done. Okay. Now what we will do? We will choose this particular public subnet is to and we will try to enter using putty okay so go to putty in authentication i will choose this particular ppk file yes and then for here what i will do i will do ec2 user okay so basically here in this particular public subnet ec2 we have entered okay now we can ping this particular private subnet ec2 from the public subnet ec2 because they are local right and we have also configured ping enabled for this private subnet ec2 right using icmp right so here i will go to private subnet ec2 and here i will take the private ip before address okay i can do ping this one okay see Ping is working perfect okay as well as if I do ping google.com here also it will work perfect because here we have configured internet gateway right now what we will do we will try to enter in the private subnet ec2 using the public subnet ec2 okay whatever we have done earlier I will just go to connect as a step one I have to execute this one okay that is done and as a step two I will copy this one and then here I will enter in this particular one okay and i will write yes that is done and now what we will do we will do ping google.com okay here see this ping is started but if i just do control c here see four packet transmitted but zero received 100 percent loss because here in this particular private subnet is two there is no internet gateway okay right now suppose in this particular private subnet is two you have basically Kept your database server, but due to some reason you need to access S3 or DynamoDB, etc., which are generally accessible via internet. That time, what you can do, you can directly use VPC endpoint to connect to this S3. If they are in same region, in our case, if they are in Ohio region, then we can access via VPC endpoint also. So for that, as a first step, what I will do, I will do AWS configure okay i will just specify the region okay i don't need to specify access key or secret key because this two already have role just i will mention us east 2 because our region default region is ohio region in this case we are working right so see us is 2 okay so here we have kept us is 2 output format not required and now if we do now aws s3 ls let's see whether it works or not okay see it is not working okay I have to do control C. But if you ch check our S3, actually there are different buckets are there. Ideally, AWS S3 LS should list all those buckets, right? But it is not doing. 
although we have given S3 access. Why? Because S3 is accessible via HTTP connection. And here we are in our private subnet EC2. Right? So how can it is possible? It will not allow, right? So for that, the trick is we will be creating a VPC endpoint. So I will go to VPC management console and here I will go to endpoints. Okay. And here I will click create endpoint demo yt vpc endpoint okay then which aws service for which aws service i want to create endpoint i want to create endpoint for s3 now here see both options you are getting one is gateway one is interface interface is nothing but a private ip address using which you can connect to interface but interface is not needed right we just need a uh, gateway kind of connection so that we can do all the programmatic stuff right so we have to choose gateway and it is in us east us is 2 because it is in our OE origin, right? So we have to choose this one, which is basically for our S3 only. Here, as you can see, and then here, what we will do the VPC we have to choose. Okay, if you check this particular image, as I have told you, this VPC endpoint will be related to one particular VPC, right? So here, we have to choose that VPC also. So here, we will choose our virtual private cloud, whatever we created, and then here, we need to mention which route table it will be assigned. Okay. So as you see this particular image, suppose this particular private subnet want to connect with S3, it will make a request to route table and this route table will forward the traffic to VPC endpoint, right? That way only it will work, right? So for that we have to choose the private route, okay? That is private subnet route table, okay? So if you check this particular route table, here currently only local connection is, is enabled. Neither NAT gateway is there, nor our any other internet gateway connection is there only local connection is there right but once we are assigning this vpc endpoint also to that route table we will see one more entry is coming to that route table okay so here i want to give full access okay and then here what i will do i will create the endpoint okay so here our endpoint is created right endpoint type is gateway and this is basically our com amazon aws us is to s3 okay so s3 connection it is enabled okay so if you check here if you go to route table this particular one is connected to the private route table okay so here if i click to this private route table here you will see here if i refresh this here you can see currently destination this one it came so this is our vpc endpoint so if request come to uh, s3 or something then it will be forwarded to the vpc endpoint from this private route table okay so our private route table is now configured now what we will do, we will try to execute this same command again, okay, AWS S3 LS, okay. If I do it now, here you can see it is perfectly working, okay. If I want, I can enter in basically one particular bucket, AWS S3 LS, maybe this particular one I can mention with the S3 colon slash slash. See, here it is showing all the s3 files or folders inside that particular bucket okay but if you see if i do ping google.com it will not work okay basically it is not publicly going to internet okay to access s3 all it is doing it is connected to our private network using the vpc endpoint and that's how it is working and now if i delete this particular endpoint then automatically again we will not able to go to aws s3 okay so i can delete this particular vpc endpoint and it is deleted and now if i again do aws s3 ls from our private subnet here again it will not work okay that's the beauty so here what you understood some specific aws services if you need to connect and if those are accessible via internet only like DynamoDB, S3, etc. Then if you want to connect them uh, from a private subnet, then instead of using NAT gateway, you can go ahead with VPC endpoint, right? So I hope you understood this. This is all for my this video. Thank you for watching.